right, welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast, Week 12 edition, last of the bye weeks. Hurrah. I'm Joe Bond, co-host with me, Dave Eddy. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, Joe? Um, it's kind of a, a boring week of football matchups. Uh, yeah, it was uh, not the greatest day of football, man, I'll be honest. No. Uh, it was shitty, pretty blah. Shitty slate. Yeah, pretty much. And we're watching another boring game Sunday night, San Fran, Green Bay. <laughs> Thought this one was going to be pretty awesome, but uh, the San Francisco defense uh, sticking it to Green Bay, man. It's 23 to nothing. And Rodgers looking a little lost out there, unfortunately. So, uh, as we said before, Aaron Rodgers, not the stud quarterback you want anymore. Not this year, at least. So. All right, man. Are you ready to jump into these games? You know it. All right, let's start off with Bucks versus Falcons. Buccaneers win on the road, thirty-five twenty-two. Uh, Winston being Winston, throwing two picks, but throwing for three hundred and three. Uh, Ronald Jones got in the end zone. This, you know, uh, on the Falcons side here, it wasn't pretty offensively. Honestly, I mean. Matt Ryan finally got in the end zone super late with Ridley. You know, Julio, 5 for 68. Uh, the running game, non-existent. But, uh, I mean, the, the story here, man, really is the, you know, Evans and Godwin for, for Tampa Bay are obviously both just, like, elite talent players, right? But they seem to, like, go on and off. Like, one's on, one's off, right? Like, it, this just seems to be what's happening. And this week was Godwin, 7 for 184 and 2. Ev- Evans, okay, 4 for 50. Uh, but, you know, that's not what you're looking for, Evans, right? Uh, in season long, you're obviously playing these guys every week. You can't sit one of them. But in DFS, man, like, you're a DFS player. How do you approach? Like, how can you pick which one to start? Um, I'm going to give you the most boring and worthless answer um, probably that I can, but um, the honest to God's truth is I just avoid them. I I really don't care who they're playing uh, because I don't know who's going to have a good game. I I think we've had one occasion this year where they both have put up, you know, the the kind of numbers DFS wise where, you know, hell you could have started both of them, um, but you just don't know what's going to happen from week to week. So DFS wise, I just don't touch him. Yeah, I, I I do not blame you one bit. Like like I said before in the past, I'm not a big DFS guy, but I I would probably avoid them too. You know, unless there's just some sort of like you know they're playing the Dolphins or something. Like I don't know, maybe both could go off or something like that. But that's tough, man, because you just know you're gonna pick the wrong one. It feels like. Uh, moving on, Broncos versus Bills. Bills twenty, Broncos three. Um. Not much going on the Broncos side, obviously. Um, I, the the news here is, you know, Lindsey totally out carrying Freeman like they kind of said they were going to do, but not amounting to much here. On the Bills side, nothing sexy offensively. Uh, Beasley and Brown both got in the end zone. Uh, Allen threw for two, but only 185. Singletary ran for 100. That's that's solid work. Um, Probably the you know, NFL news worthy wise, you know, gotta give a shout out here to Frank Gore, rushed for sixty five yards today, past Barry Sanders for third place on the all time NFL rushing list. So congrats to him. Um that dude is like never gonna stop running. I, I just I feel like we'll be doing this in ten years and he's still gonna be running somehow. Um the question though I have for you here is, you know, I mentioned the Lindsay and the Freeman kinda all year long, I feel like the 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 main theme, the common theme with the Broncos week in and week out has been if one of these guys, you know, gets hurt or something like that, or they just decide to, you know, go heavy with one, then he's going to be a stud. Well, they've said they're going to do that, and they have done it. I mean, Lindsey got 13 rushes. I think Freeman, I do not have the box score up in front of me right now. Uh, Freeman got two. Um, and they both saw two, uh, Royce Freeman got two catches, Lindsay got one, but saw more targets. So uh, yeah, the majority of the work is going to Lindsay, but it's not really working yet. Is it just 
the matchups so far in the two games that they've done it, or like what's the deal here? I definitely think it's the matchups. Um, I mean, I think we've talked not every week, but just about every week about if one of them could just get, you know, could just get that workload. Uh, and we're getting to that point now uh, where Lindsay's starting to get that workload the last couple of weeks, but mm-hmm. he's had two really tough matchups. So Yeah, Minnesota and Buffalo I, are both I, on the road. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, let, let me let me see them play a average, you know, team uh, defensively against the run, and let's see what happens. But, I mean, anyone struggles against, you know, the Broncos, even though they are more susceptible on the ground than they are in the air. Um, that that's still a really good defense. Yeah, I agree with you here. I, I, I'm I'm curious to see how he does next week against the Chargers, and then he's got Houston, Kansas City, and then Detroit after that. Oh, so there you go. KC and Detroit is going to put up <laughs> 1,500 yards in those two games. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I can only hope, man. All right, moving on here, Giants and Bears. Super exciting matchup here. Um. <laughs> Uh, it's just yeah, it's not good, man. Uh, is probably the, a the terrible, right word here. a terrible slate of games. This yeah, week. I mean, I guess you know the Bears still got a, a pretty solid defense, so you know not much going offensively for the Giants. Barkley kind of shut down again, unfortunately. Um, we did see Sterling Shepard come back, so that's good, but he didn't really amount to much this week uh, on the Bears side. Uh, Trubisky looking bad as always. Um, Robinson went off though, at least. So if you owned him and you played him, you did very well for yourself. Uh, Montgomery had a great matchup. Did not, did not do well for anybody who started him. Um, not much as far as like individual players here, but like in dynasty leagues, are you? Would you rather own Daniel Jones or uh, I'm gonna say just like you wrote it or Bitch Trubisky? Ah oh, man, I tell you, um, just the simple fact that you would have some um, some good team name choices with with Bitch Trubisky would would lead you to believe that that's where my immature ass would go. Um, <laughs> but I, I I guess the difference between the two of them is we we've seen less of Daniel Jones, um, so I think that that would actually lead me to say, well. Let me get some Daniel Jones because I feel like we kind of know what we're getting from Trubisky right now. And Jones has had his moments. Uh, yeah. He's had, he's had a few good games. Now, it's always based on, you know, matchup. But, I mean, what, almost win, isn't it, you know? So, in a dynasty league, in a, you know, one-year league at this point, probably even in DFS, and unless the matchups are just polar opposites, I think I would take Daniel Jones and all the above. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I think I'm I'm pretty much over Trubisky being a viable quarterback in fantasy. It's just not going to work for me. Um, Steelers Bengals the next game here. Steelers win sixteen to ten. Mason Rudolph was benched late in this game um, for Devlin Hodges. I guess I, I realized today I found out his name is Duck Hodges. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no idea why, but sure, we'll run. Oh, with it, he uh, he won. Uh, he was like a he won some duck calling thing in, <laughs> oh, in college. Okay. So yeah, I, I hadn't heard that either. All right, I heard the story. Yeah, he's some big old duck caller, man. The more you know. Um, <laughs> uh, James Washington didn't have a great game, but had one good play, and it was pretty awesome. He caught a pass from Devlin Hodges, stiff armed some dude to the ground. <laughs> and I ran it in for a touchdown. So, you know, if you played the odds because everybody wanted, you know, you like to go against this Bengals defense. Uh, with Juju out, people were people were asking about James Washington. I didn't love it, but it, it worked out because of the one play. So if you if you took your chances, it works, man. Um Bengals side, you know, Boyd Boyd balled out five or hundred and one in a touch, but uh not much else going. You know, at least Mixon saw a lot of work. Um, and, and that's the question we've got here though, is, you know, now this is like three weeks in a row now where Mixon is just getting a heavy workload and he's producing. Okay. Today just didn't get in the end zone, but 79 yards rushing. Um, you know, I, I think AJ and I talked about this on Thursday, so I've already given my opinion, but I want to know yours. Like, Mm -hmm. is it time to trust Joe Mixon again? Cause he was not gonna lie. He was on my shit list for a long time this year. 
Oh, and George yeah, Kittle I mean, just scored, man. Twenty ninety eight. <laughs> this is a blowout, dude. <laughs> I mean, with, with Mixon, I guess it depends on what capacity <clears throat> that you're looking at him in. Uh, I mean, if you've got him in a dynasty or a season long league, I, 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 I imagine you drafted him to, you know, to play him. So you know, you're probably stuck with him no matter what you get, but. You know he's in. He's been pretty good the last few weeks. He, I mean, he's not getting the end zone because he's on the Bengals, but he's had at least 15 carries each of the last four weeks. Um, had at least 66 yards. I mean, so yeah, he's been pretty good, especially all things considered. So, I mean, you're not getting the production that you know you probably were hoping for to Joe Mixon, but at least it's getting better. You know, at least he's at least he's being serviceable at this point and. It's not from a lack of talent. Uh, he took a run today where he probably should have lost six, seven oh, I saw yards that play. and turned I know you're into about, about a twelve yard run. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That play was amazing, dude. He just so, like, spun you know, and chewed a couple guys out and like turned. Yeah, yeah that was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. not a lack of talent um, on his behalf. It's a lack of talent around him. Yeah, and unfortunately, what he's doing the last few weeks under those circumstances is actually relatively impressive. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm with you, man. Like I'll, I'll tell you personally, I own him in one league. It's my it's my work league. Um, and and uh, yeah, I started him like the first three or four weeks of the season. Kind of benched him after that, and then I've gone back to him. So you know, luckily I, I drafted a a bunch of running backs, so I was able to at least plug in somebody who was better. Uh, flexed a receiver in his place. Really, is kind of what I did. But uh, I'm going back to him, and it's and it's working out well for me. So I'm hoping it continues. Uh, Dolphins, Browns, Browns get Browns has rocked the Dolphins today, forty-one to twenty-four. This game was a blowout early, and it stayed a blowout, man. Um, Dolphins on, you know, Fitzpatrick's thirty-seventh birthday went two two fourteen, two touchdowns, two interceptions, ran one in two. So overall, an okay fancy day. Um, if you if you happen to start him. Um, you know, there was people still kind of on the ballot train. Unfortunately, I think a lot of had to do with injuries, bye week play. Um, and there was talk that, um, uh, the other, the other running back was going to Patrick Laird. Laird was going to get in the mix yep. there. And, and I kind of, you know, I picked him as like a super deep sleeper, um, sure. because of all the passing work that he got the last couple weeks. But, uh, and he got one target, got today. one target today. <laughs> Awesome. Go Dolphins. Yeah. Like, you know, Ka- Kalen Ballage and his below two yard per average rush is really getting the job done. Um, it's awesome. So <clears throat> on the Brown side, Mayfield just, you know, 327 and three. This, I mean, we're getting the Mayfield that we all thought we were going to get. You know, maybe it's matchups right now, but this is, this is the team we all thought we were going to see, man. Um, Chubb got it done. Landry got it done. OBJ got it done. Hunt got in the end zone. Like everything's working for these guys, and they're looking good all the right time. You know, if you survive, if you drafted them and you survived this long with them being crap, minus Chubb, obviously, um, you're looking pretty going into your fantasy playoffs, man. Like, but the question still looms. Like, I mean, are are we in full believe mode at this point? I mean, to be fair, like Baker was the guy that I that I called for DFS for this week because he he's been a lot better than you think recently. So the four games before this, he he's faced some really good defenses. I in order, he went New England, so New England on the road, Denver on the road, then he had <clears throat> Buffalo and Pittsburgh. So that's like four of the top. I don't know, yeah. five, eight defenses at worst in the league, and. I mean, he had just barely under 200 yards against Pittsburgh. Um, Same thing against New England. Um, But still put up three touchdowns in those two games. Um, And then he had, you know, good games elsewhere as well. So, you know, finally got himself a really good matchup. And they took advantage of it like you would expect. I mean, that that team is, is loaded with names at least. I mean, good God, dude. I mean, you could make an argument that in the last five years, that Hunt and you know OBJ could have been you know offensive players of the year with some of the years that they've had, and then Nick Chubb is you know the kind of guy who if 
you know, the Browns were having a fantastic year with how consistent he is. I mean, maybe he gets himself somewhere in that mix. And so, I mean, they're, they're just so talented offensively that I think it's, it's just a matter of time before they get comfortable with each other. And ever since Hunt's been back, you know, that they've really gotten better. So I don't, I wouldn't go so far at this point to say that they're an elite offense, but they're, they're certainly a lot closer to what we thought we'd be getting with all these names that they have. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm, um, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable starting them going forward. That's for sure. Um, next game here, Panthers versus Saints. Uh, Saints win a nail biter, man. 34, 31 walk off kick, dude. Um, should have gone the other way. Actually, uh, unfortunately for my, my hokey brethren, Joey Sly blew it today for the, the Panthers. Honestly, he could have won that game a couple of times. It felt like he missed a couple of kicks there. So that sucks to see, but, uh, Kyle Allen, good game here. Three touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey, just doing Christian McCaffrey things. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Uh, DJ Moore balled out in a 126 and two touchdowns. Uh, on the other side of the ball, you know, Breeze had a good game, 303. Uh, Latavius Murray had a good game, man. Seven for 64 and one touch. I had a, I think it was like a 40 yard run touchdown or something like that. So that's obviously a, you know, big boost to his stats, but uh, Kamara saw a lot of volume, 11 for 54 on the ground, saw nine targets, caught all nine for 48 in the air, so that's good. And then Thomas just, God, this dude's amazing. Um, he's got to be the arguably the, the best receiver in game. Like, I know people want to put Hopkins, but I think i got to put him above Hopkins at this point. Um, at, least, at least this year. Yeah, sure, it's man. incredible. I, I mean, speaking of that, though, man, like, you know, so – we're seeing this record setting pace that Thomas is on with like, I think it's uh, what is it? Receptions in a year or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Murray's been good lately, taking a lot of work from Kamara. I mean, is Kamara ceiling taking a hit? I mean, he's, he's getting yards right now, but he's not like, he's not getting used as much as he was. You know, pre -injury. I mean, he, he's getting so much work in the passing game. Um, not not so much in the running game. So he, I mean, he's getting double digit carries pretty much every week still. But you know, fifteen seems like it's about the max right now. So you know, it's going to be hard for him to get you know hundred yard games. He hasn't scored a rushing touchdown um, in well over a month. Uh, so I mean, it's it's getting hard. But I mean, he gets so many catches. So yeah, uh, you know, he's 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 still getting you know like eight catches a game now. The yardage isn't isn't there because he's, you know, getting them out of the backfield, obviously, you know, quite a bit. But, you know, if it wasn't for, you know, for PPR points, he he would really be someone that that you'd have a hard time. I don't know if I'd say hard time. I'm talking DFS-wise. Um, I mean, if you own him season long or dynasty, there's no way in the world you're you're sitting him. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 just weird. Like, Murray has really eaten into that, that workload because he's been so good. Um, and I guess I, I don't know, maybe I'm not convinced that Kamara is just 100% back and healthy because he just isn't having those explosive plays. He's just being a little more consistent, but not explosive. Yeah, that, that thought has crossed my mind a couple of times, so I'm kind of right there with you. But yeah, he's hard to sit in season long, that's for sure. I Raiders and impossible. To yeah, Raiders and Jets. The next game here, Jets smash the Raiders, which is quite a surprise, man. Honestly, the Raiders came in with a winning record, man. They were looking all right, you know, not great, but all right. And the Jets obviously not looking great. So, kind of thought the Raiders were going to take this one, but thirty-four to three, man. That's uh, yikes. It was so bad. Derek Carr got benched, dude. Uh, it, <laughs> Not good today. Yeah, didn't even get to the fourth quarter. Oh, it was in the third quarter. It was too. so yeah. bad. Yeah, it was bad, man. I uh, I started him today. Thought it was a good matchup, and it was clearly not. Um, Jacob struggled. Waller struggled. I mean, this whole offense struggled. Not much to see on the Raiders side here. Uh, on the Jets side, man, another good offensive game. Darnold, you know, bouncing back after a couple struggle games. Three fifteen, two touchdowns. You know, Bell not popping off, but, you know, PPR leagues, he's getting the job done at least. And then uh, Robbie Anderson scored a touch today. Crowder kind of disappeared. But, I mean, what do we think about Darnold going forward? He's got some nice matchups coming up here. Um, you know, he's he's playing better. It looks like he's more 
comfortable back there. Like what, he's not seeing ghosts, right? <laughs> <laughs> what uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do we think about Darnold? Like is he is he kind of stream worthy at this point? Man, I tell you, it's crazy. I, I there's nothing that I have a reason to like the Jets for, but I, I've said it on this podcast a couple of times where I mean I, I really like a lot of the the things that Jets have going for him. So you know, top of my head, I, I want to say yeah, I think you know I think Sam's kind of past that injury now and, and getting in the groove of things. And then you go back and look and, and see who he's faced. And you see he's faced Miami and the Giants and the Redskins. And then he faced Oakland. So those are, you know, at least three of the probably five worst passing defenses in the league. And so he's getting his. Hey, so, you know, yeah. good on him. You, be, you know, you go against who you play. But I don't know that I would necessarily say that he's definitely turned the corner. And that's hard because, like, Darno is one of my favorite quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. And theoretically, he has some decent weapons. But I don't know. I, I'm going to have to see him kind of do it against a little better competition. And we're getting towards the end of the year. So, well, and so um, that's what I mean. There's not he's, a lot of time left. He's kind of stream worthy, right? So let's put it out there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Next week, got Cincy. The week after that, he's got Miami. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I'm not touching him because he gets Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo. Well, Buffalo's week 17. Yeah, so there you go. So, so I'm not playing in week 15, 16, and but then you can 13 and 14. Him. Hey, if you need, you need to get your desperate at quarterback, right? Like you just started Car today. Like <laughs> I don't know who would ever the hell do something like that. Um, uh, but <laughs> maybe you flip over to Darnold next week and plays. He goes against Cincy, who. Let's be honest, they're bad. <laughs> so, and then he gets Miami. So you got two weeks in a row to mm-hmm. to get you into the playoffs, right? Or you know, win you a first round playoff game, even in week fourteen. So I, he's definitely somebody that I'm keeping an eye on as far as like a streamable quarterback. If you if you're in that position, um, Seahawks Eagles the next game here, bit of a low scoring affair. Seahawks win seventeen to nine though. Um, you know. They're just Wilson wasn't really clicking today. I'm not really sure what was going on with him. Um, Penny was the the lead back here, though, man. 14 for 129 and a touch. He had a 58 yard TD run. Carson took a back seat. I want to say he had like eight or nine carries. I mean, Penny just had the hot hands. So I think they just wrote it. But uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm ready to like just be like, oh, this is Penny's backfield now. I think it was just you know ride the hot hand, see what was working right. Um, <clears throat> you can agree or disagree with that if you want, but uh, on the Eagles side, Wentz just uh, I, I don't like it. I, I, we'll get to this in a minute. Sanders didn't you know didn't get much done. Ertz did well, fourteen targets, caught twelve for ninety one in the touch. But back to Wentz, man, like I gotta ask the question: Is Wentz good? I mean, when he's throwing to, you know, a bunch of nobodies, uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, to, to be spectacular. And, I mean, again, I, I look back at, you know, the schedule that he's faced. And, you know, prior to today, he's, he's faced some good pass defense. So, yeah, he's gone against Dallas on the road, Buffalo on the road, Chicago, New England. Uh, yeah, you know, it's been not, a rough schedule. But, you know, like, dude, I saw some of those games today. They were, you know, they were – Playing a lot of red zone for a while there, and it just—he was like Miles Sanders would come out of the backfield, and the ball would sail like six feet over his head, like little dump off passes to a wide open Miles Sanders who could have walked into the end zone once, just overthrew yeah. him. Like it's crazy. I don't know, man. I mean, I—I I guess you know when I think about it, and I mean, I just because of the thought that I have, I guess I'm going to make the narrative fit, you know, my thought process, but. You know, he's probably got the mindset of, okay, I've got Ertz and Goddard to throw the ball to, and and that's it. So, you know, he's probably feeling as though he's really got to kind of go above and beyond and, you know, make all these plays. And before you know it, you're inside your own head and you can't yeah. complete a, a simple little swing pass, you know. It's um, interesting, though, because he's, he's got a real nice schedule coming. We just talked about how hard his schedule has been coming up. Yeah. The next three weeks look real pretty. But I don't know if I can trust him, man. Yeah. Miami, I mean, this week the Giants, and the bad, Redskins. So, and he didn't do he didn't do no, it this week. But I mean, no Alshon, no mm-hmm. um, Aguilar. Not that <laughs> Aguilar is awesome, but 
Just so not, just a lot of there. right, but just a lot of people gone. So I agree, it's tough to judge, but I also think it's going to be tough to trust him, even in these really juicy matchups coming up. So it's pretty unfortunate. Uh, Lions, you Redskins. Look, you look for that DFS wise, though. You know, you look for yeah, you look for guys who ownership. have had tough matchups and look like they're on the downswing, and then all of a sudden, you know, they face. You know, like I said, they face Miami, you know, and you're like, oh, okay, well, Wentz is going to be fine, and no one's going to play him because they're scared right. to death. Yeah. Yeah, definitely contrarian play, for sh- I-, I would imagine, for sure. Um, Lions, Redskins, not a lot to talk about here. Gross. Awful game, both sides. Duh, stupid Redskins for winning. Um, <laughs> ruining your draft. Like, way to go, guys. You can't even suck. Um yeah, I got nothing on this game, man. It's good no, to see we, Darius Geis. much about it already. Yeah. Nobody cares. It's at least good to see Darius Geis not get hurt. I'll just go with that. Hey, there you uh, go. Jags and Titans. Jaguars 20, Titans 42. This was a complete blowout. Um, this game, I think, was like 28 to 3 at one point or something crazy like that. Yeah, like uh, halfway through the third quarter. Oh, I think. yeah, it was bad. So Jaguars got some, got some garbage time. Uh, Fournette gets in the end zone, baby. Finally, uh, two touchdowns, almost ran for a hundred on the ground, uh, but caught nine through the air, man. That's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. So he had a well, they monster. were playing from behind. Yeah, so. but still, he never sees that kind of work. Like they usually <laughs> throw in anybody else but him, and you know. But um, Westbrook was the uh, the lead target getter for for the for the Jags. So. Um, Take that for too well. Um, Tannehill, though, on the Titan side, he's looking good. Looking real good. 14 for 18, 259, and two touch. Uh, real nice day. Um, Derrick Henry balled out, 159, and two touchdowns. A.J. Brown took advantage of, of not having to face Bouye and uh, went 135 in a touch. So that was good there. You know, interestingly enough, though, like we kind of had two – relatively similar runners face off against each other like kind of big powerful you know they want to make contact runners right Fournette and henry you know these guys both continue you know they continue to perform week in and week out um you know in season long though like if you had to pick one who do you like better going the rest of the year um, I mean, with those two guys, uh, you, you can kind of flip a coin, I think. And, you know, really, to me, it just depends matchup wise. I, I think they're, like you said, they're almost identical. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the difference this year, at least, has been that um, Fournette's been catching the ball more than you think. I mean, yeah. in the last four weeks, he's had nine, seven, five, and seven catches. So, all, you know, it's just like, what the hell, you know, like he doesn't. He, you know, it's not normally that big of a part of his game. He just hasn't gotten into the end zone until this year. Like this is literally his second and third touchdown of the year. Um, but I mean, they're, they're basically interchangeable in PPR at this point. So, I mean, it's kind of a cop out, I guess. It, it really just who who has the best matchup, and that that you know that's who I'm taking for that particular week. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. I um, I think because of the touchdowns and the lack thereof. For Fournette, I think I would slightly lean Henry. He seems to be scoring a bit more. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe that's oh, way maybe more. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's where I lean. Um, but yeah, it's they're both good. So you're okay with either one of them. Last game on the slate: Cowboys Patriots. The big one of the big marquee matchups of the day. Sloppy game. Weather was bad in New England, but Patriots take it thirteen to nine. Um, that you know, Dak didn't look good. Uh, Zeke was okay. You know, he, he at least, you know, went over a hundred yards, 120 yards from scrimmage. Um, Cooper though, like I know you wrote down Cobb, but I want to mention the fact that Cooper didn't catch a ball. Well, no, he's uh, Stefan Gilmore is covering him. Like it's insane. He, <laughs> he almost had one, but it, uh, late in the game, it would have been like a 20, 25 yard catch or something like that. Uh, but he, it bounced off the turf and then into his stomach and they called it the catch at first and then they reversed it. But it was, uh, yeah, total donut. So I faced off against him in a couple of leagues. So I'm really happy to see that. Uh, 
uh patriots that's the, that's the right week to play them. like yeah. i mean no I, it just it would be so nice to see the saints and patriots play a game because i want to see gilmore against michael thomas and i want to see who is the best of the best well hey we're gonna see gilmore versus hopkins next week that's yeah. gonna be pretty uh want, that's good thomas i know i know but hey we're gonna so, get the we're gonna saints get the next patriots best thing super bowl. we're saints gonna get the patriots super bowl baby we'll see but uh we're gonna get like the next best thing with Hopkins and 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 Gilmore, so that'll that'll be nice. Um, Patriots side, uh, I mean, nothing great here. I mean, it's just not an offensive game, right? It's, that's that's all there is to it here. Um, Kill Harry caught his first touchdown in his NFL career, so kudos to him. Um, you know, Edelman saw his twelve targets, caught eight for ninety three, just doing Edelman things. James White was like missing in action. I have no idea what the hell happened there. So um, <laughs> I had him in two leagues and I'm not happy about that one. I'm happy about Cooper, but not happy about white. So whatever. Um, the question here though, is like, you know, we've seen this Dallas offense go off, right? And then we see them do stuff like this. And if you look, it's like all matchup based. So how elite is this offense? Like is like people were talking like Dak should be in the MVP conversation. Like I think he's getting <laughs> removed from that real quick after today. I mean, man, I I think people people have such a short memory, you know, specifically just people that are fans, you know, have such a short memory that until you go back and and really, you know, look at things or, or think about them extremely objectively, it's so easy to kind of just forget about a whole variety of things like mm-hmm. This game was played in a a downpour, so yeah. automatically that's gonna not eliminate, but that's gonna severely hamper the passing game. So if you if you thought that you know Dak was gonna go for three hundred and four touchdowns in this weather against that defense, and then you're crazy to begin with. Um, you know, if anything, I, I guess it's more of a surprise that that Zeke didn't have a little bit better game. Not that he had a bad game, um, but you know he. If anything, I would have thought that he might go a little bit more off, but it's it's so matchup dependent in the NFL. I mean, you can literally go from one week looking like you know the best team ever, you know, against the Bengals, and then you face you know the Steelers defense, and you look like you know you don't you've never played football before. So yes, I, I would say that you know that Cowboys still have an elite offense. I mean, Dak has been terrific. Zeke, even though he hasn't had a Zeke like year. Is still one of the best running backs in football. Um, as long as Amari Cooper isn't lined up against a good uh, corner, he's good. Um, Cobb and <laughs> yeah. Gallup are good. Um, the offensive line is tremendous. So, yeah, they're still an elite offense. But you do have to temper expectations when you play, you know, teams like, you know, teams like New England. You know, I mean, it's just, it's Fran, just guys is, like that. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I, I kind of posed the question negatively on purpose. This is, you know, kind of play the game a little bit so yeah no i uh, feel you man so all right man well that's it we ripped through this in just over 30 minutes so good stuff man uh this game is 30 to 8 still this game's over so 49ers taking that one green bay is gonna fall to eight and three san fran will go to ten and one so we'll uh call that one a wrap and uh yeah hope you all did well this week and see you all next week for the week 13 wrap up. See ya.